last video we checked out terraform and infrastructure as code and now we complete this topic fully we check into how do our automated deployment of our application also works and how does this works in azure pipelines and then we have a full automated deployment when we check out to git and change something on the infrastructure or change something in our code how this is fully automated deployed and what we are using is azure devops pipelines for that i'm used to pipelines so so i naturally picked it but there's github actions for example which is also totally fine to do some people love jenkins um, for me jenkins is kind of outdated it feel the ui feels very bad in my opinion i like azure devops way more and we we have this one pipeline where we do deploy our infrastructure and if the infrastructure is successfully deployed we will deploy our services which is in for now just log in world chat character and map there will soon be inventory service and quest service when our first NPC starts, which is pretty soon. Then we have monitoring and we have traffic and our game gets deployed. This login service, chat service, character service, map service is the build task. This will build the Docker image and push it to the according repository to our ACR repository, there you see it checks out the branch, it logs into ACR, then it create, creates a Docker image, which also compiles the, the source code, and then it pushes the image to our container registry. And they do that for all servers, and then we deploy also monitoring. When you see them like that, this means where from top to bottom this means they can run in parallel so they depend on infrastructure when infrastructure is done they run those agents will run in parallel those those different tasks and you see game deploy depends on traffic and the services it doesn't depend on monitoring so if monitoring isn't deployed our game still deploys Monitoring deploys Prometheus with Grafana, which is a pretty standard stack for monitoring in Kubernetes. Um, we look into that in its own video. Um, we just look at the deployment today, but we look into Grafana in its own video. Traffic is a way to um, do load balancing within Kubernetes. There are different ways, for example, Nginx, is one of the most common ones. Nginx is really bad when it comes to UDP traffic because it's not able to have some sticky sessions with UDP traffic. It's able to do that with HTTPS and with TCP, but not with UDP, and we need that. There are two other competitors which we could use. One is Metal LB. The problem with Metal LB is it will clash with the Azure load balancer. So there's only traffic which which handles what we need with the UDP traffic really well. I've tested them all. There there are even more than that, but um, I, I've tested them all and I was most happy with traffic. But this is uh, because of the case with the UDP traffic. If we use the Azure Load Balancer, the AKS capability to work with, with Azure is there. We could just deploy with Azure Load Balancer. The problem is each UDP service gets its own public IP and the public IP costs three to two to three euros per month. So if we have 10 services, it's 20 to 30 euros per month wasted because of uh, just public IPs, which, which I don't need because my services could each run on a different port and then the traffic will go to traffic and traffic is able to to load the the traffic to to the according services to the according ports. So let's check out uh, what well, how our pipelines look like. They're, they're actually quite easy most of the time. So for example, let's see a service build. What I did is I made a YAML file, which is 
a declarative way um, to build pipelines in Azure DevOps. Um, often also called YAML pipelines because they are classic pipelines, but classic pipelines, like the name suggests, is, cla is classic or, or very old. Um, you barely need them nowadays. Uh, YAML pipelines is the new thing. So, and what, what you can do with, with a YAML pipeline like that is you can have parameters and then you can define steps which needs to run one after another. And I have here parameters for a service build. It's quite simple. We need to know which container registry it has to work with. And we need to know where, where the source code is located. This goes always to our server and then it goes to login service when when login service is given or this parameter can be overwritten it will be overwritten with map service then it will go to folder map service and and the other way and the repository name is basically the image name in the azure container registry so what we do is quite simple we log into the container registry and then we do docker build and push with the according path you see here the service path which I told you it's in working directory. The working directory is the folder where the Git repository is checked out to. And in our Git repository, it's MMO RPG server. And then for example, login service. And we are inside of here with the Docker file. The Docker file is there. It's created by Visual Studio. Honestly, I didn't change too much here. If I did change anything at all. So, sorry, I closed that. So these are the steps. I've made a template. Um, this is called a template because the full pipeline has more parameters. But this is a template for those steps because I need want to reuse them. They are used for every service build. And then we have this pipeline YAML where, where the whole pipeline is configured. It, if you configure a parameter at the top like this, then you get the the ability when you run your pipeline, you get the ability to have uh, parameters here where, where you can configure them. If if the pipeline is triggered automatically because I push to get or something, the default values are taken. I have disabled triggers currently with trigger none. The reason I do that is because I I deallocate my virtual machine so the Kubernetes cluster isn't available when I start developing. Only when I do testing, I start the, the machine because to save cost. If I didn't do that, then I would do trigger uh, on the main branch. And that, that's quite easy to do. I would do trigger branch and my branch is called main because it's a new GitHub project. And every time I push something to main, this would run automatically with the default values as parameters at the top. But I don't want that. I want to deploy by hand with, with because I can't deploy every time because the machine isn't available. So I have to press here and press deploy. Maybe when I'm willing to spend more money in this project then and l let the machine run, then I will change that for sure. Then we have variables. You can define variables like that. You can give it a name. Um, let's give it test and give it a value, uh, whatever. You could also maybe take the parameter as value and something like that. That's possible. The reason I don't do that be because I, I want to have the variables in a group. This way I have a library and what this library does for me, I can clone this library and do one for each environment. That's really great and easy. And what I can do, you see I have secrets here. And those secrets, even though this is a public project, aren't visible for, for the public audience. And I I really like that to be able to have secrets that 
when when I have here name and value in in the file which is checked in to get them. Obviously, it's really easy to to read that, and this way I'm able to to have secrets which aren't public available even though this is a public project. We can check that out. If you create a private window, then you can see how the project will look like for somebody who's not um, able to, to change anything. And he doesn't see the library, he's not able to see the variables, which are secrets, which is great. The reason why, why it's a good idea to make um, a project public is you get parallel jobs. When you have a private repository, you have private project, then you have one free parallel Microsoft hosted job. That means Microsoft hosts an agent that runs your pipeline, your build pipeline, and that's for free one parallel job. If you host the, the agent yourself, then you get also one for free, and I'm a Visual Studio Enterprise subscriber, so I get another one for free which I basically paid for, so it's not free. But when I make a public project, and since this is open source, it's a public project nonetheless, then I get 10 parallel jobs. And I think that's really great because um, I'm able to build 10 times in parallel. And that means that when I run my, my pipeline, these, these jobs that are able to run parallel, they will run in parallel completely and um, we, we can do that we can maybe start a run to to see how it looks like maybe we don't want to execute the terraform and if you click stages to run you are able to disable stages that you don't want to run let let's just um let's just build new images and keep it at that give it one second it will detect that it has to skip infrastructure. Since I don't load in my login service artifacts from the infrastructure, I'm able to even skip, even though they depend on that, if you were wondering. And it's Microsoft hosted agent, so they, it takes, takes a second or two. But now you see they all run in parallel. We can see they are all doing things in parallel. And that's because I have parallel jobs. And normally you have to pay for that. But when you have an open source project, Microsoft is kind enough to give you 10 for free, which is really great for open source projects because you can build faster and have faster turnarounds when you want to test something in your uh, on your system. So, but sorry, uh, let's get back to how how a pipeline is created. So I, we have variables, we have parameters, and we have triggers. So the next thing is we have stages. Um, stages is the configuration for uh, for those dots here. For example, infrastructure is a stage, login service is a stage, world chat service is a stage, game deploy is a stage. What you can do, what I often see is you build one pipeline for building and for example pushing the docker containers to the container registry and you have one pipeline for deploying it on your different infrastructures and then what i often see is that for each infrastructure they have one stage for example instead of game deploy i could name this um, game deploy dev environment monitoring dev environment traffic dev environment because they all deploy something to the environment and i could make an, another stage which depends on the dev environment deployment for game deploy qa monitoring qa traffic qa this means that only qa mm -hmm. is deployed when dev is green so when dev deployment is is done only then QA deployment will start and what you also can do is um, you can give those stages which I didn't do because I don't need that in this project but you can give this those stages in environment and when you let fast create an environment let's say we have a QA environment 
And what you can do in those environments, you can make approvals. So let's add an approval and add myself maybe as an approver. That means when, when we have in our pipeline the stage for QA deployment, it doesn't deploy it right away when dev is green. It waits for me to approve the deployment. And then we could have game deploy production where our uh, release manager is able to, to give the approval and this version will be automatically deployed. That's what I see mostly and what I think is a really good way to do automatic deployments with multiple environments and to configure that. So that's what, what stages are. And then we define those stages, which we have infrastructure, display name infrastructure depends on, and these two brackets. For the first stage that's not needed, but um, I'm very verbose here, this basically means depends on nothing. When you don't provide anything, if, if I remove that here, for example, then login service will depend on infrastructure. Because if you don't say anything with depends on, it will always depend on the previous stage defined in the YAML file. But um, I want to be able to move those stages around and they still should work. So I, I say depends on infrastructure. So even when I move login service to the very bottom, it still works. So depends on nothing and depends on, and you can give a list. You can depend on multiple things. For example, game deploy depends on all service and traffic. So when you have your stage, then you have to define jobs. There are two different jobs. Uh, one is uh, a build job, which all of mine, ex um, all of mine are build jobs because I was lazy, honestly. But they are also deployment jobs. Then, then it's not jobs, it's deployment. And with the deployment, you can do the things with the environment that I just showed. With jobs, they don't support it. Deployments can that, but then you just have to write deployments. So then you have jobs and then you can define a deployment there. And with the deployment, you give a strategy. Most of the time, it's strategy run once deployment, and then you have your steps again, which which is the templates we have just wrote. And you can give an environment here to have this approval thing that I just explained. But I don't, since I'm a single developer, um, that would be overkill in my opinion. And this everything here are built built apart from some of them are deployments. Maybe I. I, sh I could make them deployments, but it, it doesn't matter for what I'm doing. So I have jobs and the job has a name. We have to define a pool. This could be, for example, window latest or I think Windows 2000, v Visual Studio 2017 or something. Um, let's check the documentation. There you have it, VS. 2017 Windows 2000 could be Windows latest and Ubuntu latest and whatever. You you have those pre-built images which you can use. You can build your own images, but I'm totally fine with Ubuntu machines building my application. Then I say workspace clean. Um, this removes um, the workspace. This is not needed for Microsoft hosted agents and. I'm using Microsoft Hosted Agent because you get a new agent nonetheless anyway when when your job starts. But when you do self-hosted agents, which I do for a lot of my clients, then you want to have Workspace clean because else the agent doesn't remove anything in the working directory of the agent. And it could be the case that some of your applications when application A builds on your machine and then application B builds also after that on the machine and the working directory is filled with some build artifact from application A that you have troubles with that. Workspace clean all and gets rid of that for 
Microsoft hosted agent and it doesn't make a difference because it's always clean. And then we have our steps where we define what this job does. And in our case, we have a template and we, the template has parameters. For example, Terraform execute has to execute Terraform parameter. We look at Terraform execute. It has a bunch of parameters, but we just give it execute Terraform. Here it is, execute Terraform. For all the other parameters, since we don't provide anything, default value is used. And then it defines the steps. We could also define steps. For example, let's just take this one task, define the step directly here. There's no problem doing that. But I like to have steps in a template file to sort of keep everything shorter and cleaner. Now I can look at the pipeline YAML and I know just stages are defined here. Because when you define the steps inside of everything here, the file gets really big and messy. And we have, for example, multiple services that we want to build, but the build process is the same for each service. Then we are able to leverage the template. We just give service passes login service, repository name is login service. For word chat, service passes word chat service, repository name word chat. You get the idea. And that's how, how you can build your whole pipeline. For monitoring, we, I do everything by one Azure CLI script, for example, where I get the credentials from my Kubernetes server. I go to the folder and I Helm install a Prometheus with the Redis exporter and everything. Service build, we talked about traffic is also quite easy. It's just a Helm install for traffic. We didn't talk about um, Helm and everything. We will talk about in, in a future video about how, how everything in Kubernetes works because we never talked about Kubernetes in depth, I guess. And then there, you, are, you got the pipeline and we are able to, to build and deploy everything fully automatic if we want to. Which is really great. I, I know I have to, I can just push the application and if I have triggers on, then it would be full automated. But for now I run pipeline and I can test with the new servers online. Unity client connects to the server and everything is fine. And we, we can even check that. I have started the node and then we have our pods with our application and everything running and what we can do to show you just show you what Grafana does for us uh, we, we just started the server and because of that uh, there's not much to to see but when we go to for example our monitor yeah I have to change the namespace when we go to Grafana it's in a Prometheus namespace. I have here Grafana and my Grafana isn't public, so you can't connect to it. But um, Cube Control and Kubernetes support port forwarding through the Kubernetes proxy. And this involves some console commands, but the tool we have is able to do that. And I have to provide username and password. But since Grafana isn't public anyway, it's fine. And there we can we can go to dashboards and see all kind of things. For example, compute resources. We can see what uh, maybe change that to our MMORPG. We can see how much resources our different services use currently. And since I installed um, Redis, so here we can see what our Redis is doing. The Redis is most likely will be our bottleneck because everything currently communicates inside the cluster over Redis. 
So it's really interesting to manage that. We have 13 clients connected to it, which most likely should correlate to how many services we have. It kind of matched. And we, we can see what Redis is doing, how, how healthy it is, and everything like that. That's Grafana and really, really fast. That's our monitoring. And for our traffic, the, the ingress controller, which I shortly explained, we just have ingress routes for every uh, other service. And these ingress routes, if you check them, they're really simple. It's just, uh, we define the service and the port which the service connects to. And that's it. And then traffic will route the, the traffic to, to that service. I hope this helps. I also want to thank, of course, my Patreon, Julian for supporting this project and helping me. I wish you all a great weekend. Bye.